everybody. So the video I'm about to show you, this is my fourth uh, install of a solar, solar system. First one I learned on was a Harbor Freight. If you're just getting into uh, solar power, I highly recommend getting a Harbor Freight. Everybody on the internet bad mouths them. Oh, you can't make any power from it. Oh, did it, did it. The reason you want it is something good to learn with. And if you tear it up, break it up, smoke it, you're only out a hundred something dollars. Everything comes with it. It's a good way to learn, and that's how I learned. I just followed the instructions, plugged everything up, and hey, man, I'm making power. Hey, solar works. Give you my background. I'm a uh, German, German Union electrician certified. I have licenses and uh, certifications. I'm also a cost estimator for electrical. So I have electrical background in cost and have an electrical background in installation. The reason I'm letting you know all that, a lot of in internet engineers are going to watch this video and go, oh, you're doing this wrong or the calculation for this. I'm not going to do math. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I want somebody who's a beginner that can understand that they don't have to go elaborate to have a decent system. So my second system I installed was over the top. I was working a lot of overtime and every dollar that I made I put into that solar system. I've got AGM batteries that are over the top. I've got charge controller that's over the top. Everything's state of the art. Well then my third system said, you know what, it's just going in the shop. I need to do a little cheaper. I got an inverter, got a charger, got golf cart batteries this time. Hey, you know what? It's working. I tried higher voltage coming in. I tried parallel circuits coming in. I tried everything. So I'm going to show you this is the fourth one and I tried to do it as cheap as I could this time and see what I could get away with and still have quality. I like quality and I want it right the first time but I want to spend a lot of money. I also like learning so I figured I'd play with this. So here we are. I'm going to walk you through the components. I want you to let, let you know it's a 12 volt system. Okay, warning, here come the internet engineers. Oh, it should be 48 volt. Oh, you're, it's more efficient at 48 volt. It is. They're technically, they're correct. The problem is, is one of those batteries goes out in a 48 system, you're hosed. Your system's down. Hey, man, what's going on here? Now you're going to blow your brains out. It's late at night and the stuff's not working. There's no need for that. Another reason I go to 12 volt, I try not to use an inverter. My lights are 12 volt DC. Every appliance that I try to use is a 12 volt system. Everything is 12 volt. And the reason for 12 volt is because I don't have to step it down. I don't have to. And you step it down, they say, well, you can get a converter and drop it from 48 to 12. All right. That's a resistor. A resistor eats power. And I'm doing everything I can to squeeze every little watt, every little volt out of this system. With that, I'm going to go with Rule King Deep Cycle Batteries. I am not sponsored by Rule King. I have found that so far they're the cheapest online. And by online, I'm going to order them online, make sure they're in stock, show up at my local Rule King, then I'm going to use my Rule King credit card and get 5% off. Another way to save some money. I'm going to use RV boxes. Instead of building an elaborate system, I'm going to use some big the Ho2 batteries. And I'm going to vent that battery box outside through this wall. I don't have to build anything fancy. I've seen a lot of stuff on the internet. Look what this box I built. Dur -dur -dur. Takes a lot of room up. I'm just using the shelf and going down the wall. And I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll find another spot for the tenth battery. That's plenty of power with the batteries. I'm going to have 400 watts on the roof. I'm taking a pause here. Because here's where the internet engineers are going to come out again. I'm using a hold, hold it. Whoa! I'm using a Harbor Freight charger. It's their top of the line, and it's like with a coupon, 60 bucks. I've seen these rebranded with other other brands, a little little cheaper price. But I found out the Harbor Freight's actually got the higher quality. So this is a Harbor Freight charger, and here's where the internet engineers come in. Oh, you can't do that. This thing's rated at 500 watts. I'm bringing 400 watts into it. Hey, I got I got a good cushion there. I'm only going to be driving a small chest freezer on this. So with the panels, the charger, and the amount of batteries I'm going to have, it's going to work. Guarantee it. So now I'm going to walk you through here. I hate to use the word cheap, so I'm gonna, I'll use cheap a lot, but you can interchange with inexpensive. 
Another thing you can do, anything that says solar on it, you need to try another way of Googling to get that part online. If you put solar on it, it's probably got a 30% markup on it. If you say marine, a little bit less. So I'm using marine products. I actually like marine products. They're made to be sh shaken on the boat. They're made for a lot of moisture. And here in the south with the high humidity that we have, some days it'll be 100%. It's not even raining. So all this stuff can take moisture. It can take a little bit of abuse. That's the reason I go with it. So let's start. This black pipe you see is the conduit that I've got going to the roof. I haven't installed my panels yet because I'm waiting for good weather to do that. But on the roof will be the panels, the wire, and then the wire will come to this breaker. This breaker is going to be rated at 50 amps. It's a circuit breaker. It's got a switch. It's marine. From here, it goes to the charge controller. I have wire coming here from the charge controller. It goes down to the charging circuit. The charging circuit is what goes to the batteries. Now here's where I go cheap. I've got an on-off switch, DC rated, but you don't need anything elaborate. Then coming back out from that battery, I have a switch for the fuse block. Fuse block, I can turn all these fuses off at once. Now we go to the fuse box. I've got this where it's grounded on the negative, so these will light up and tell me what circuit's hot and what's not. So I'm going to go through this again. And I'm going to add some more components now because I don't want to overcomplicate it. Conduit, circuit breaker. Now, something I didn't explain, now I'm going to. I have an on-off switch. Conduit, circuit breaker, on-off switch, charge controller. Charge controller, switch, going to the batteries. From the batteries, going to another circuit breaker. Then to the switch, then to the panels. Here's a little tidbit. If you can change the car battery out in your car, you can do this. If you can jumper cable your car to start it when you left the battery dead, red to red, black to black, you got this. Don't let the guys on the internet go, oh, did you, you know, it's so, it's so complicated. Red to red, black to black. So now, and I've even laid it out like this. I call this my DC side. This is the AC side. I'm going to throw two components that I want to talk about before I go into all this. This is a cutoff, battery cutoff, that I got from Missouri Wind and Power. I'm sorry, Missouri Wind and Solar. This will cut off the circuit that I'm driving to the inverter that's going to the freezer. If this hits 12.3 volts, it cuts the power off. Here's where the internet engineers come in. Well, you could have a, a battery management system do this. They're completely right. I'm not going to spend that money. This charger, this charge controller, can take care of the float, the charge, and the hit to sulfate those batteries and unsulfate them. I don't need all that. I'm going with uh, Rule King batteries. I'm going as inexpensive as I can. Here's another one. This is, uh, I'm going to move the slot. This is called a BLS. There's some reviews online that call this snake oil. I've installed this on every one of my systems. This BLS will hit those batteries with a square wave and unsulfate those batteries. Makes them last a lot longer. I know it works. I heard a battery bank that I was playing with. I gave the battery bank time to charge and use this BLS. It completely worked. So, now they see. I've got my battery down here. I've got this four alt. That's four forward slash zero wire. Well, you, you don't need that. You could go with a one alt or you could go with a double alt. Trust me, don't, scre don't skimp on the wire. DC loves fat pipes. And by pipes, the size of the wire. The more that you can get through there, the better it can be. Any wire that I got on here is stranded wire. Electrons travel on the outside of cables. Everybody thinks that fat wire is traveling through it. Not, not really. It's traveling on the outside. The more strands you have, the better it conducts. That's why welding cable is so much better than solid wire. This is welding cable. Uh, Windy Nation sells kits. You can get it for that. So we're going from the battery. Now I've got a fuse. 
this fuse is what the automotive guys use for in competitions for their for their uh, their amplifiers. I didn't buy any solar. I didn't buy a marine product. I bought just something that goes for a stereo, 50 amp rated. Now I've got this cutoff switch. It's just just a blade switch. They're like six bucks. I've taped it up to keep it all the uh, exposed conductors out of the way. Now. I'm going to the inverter. This is a thousand watt that I've been playing with. I will be going to a fifteen hundred. Here's where you don't scrimp. Don't don't worry about the brand name. Worry about the what kind this is, and then go read the reviews and see if it, if there's bad reviews on the product. Make sure you get a pure sine wave inverter. Pure sine wave is clean power going to your appliance or to your device. You'll see some internet engineers tell you, well, you can get away with a modified, blah, 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 blah. I'm not. I'm going to spend a little bit more money. I want the cleanest power that I can have in my cabin. I'm not going to scrimp on that. Motors love clean power. Electronics love clean power. You want to watch TV? You want to use your laptop? Why would you not we'll go with something that's a little bit better? So here, now I've got my negative. Remember, jumper cables, red to red, black to black. Just like you're hitting that battery on your car. You come up here, and there's my negative. I've got AC power. So now the AC power comes over to this panel right over here. So with that, I want to go over one more thing. A lesson that I learned, these lugs, I did not use crimp lugs. I'd have to go buy a crimp tool. Crimp tools sometimes don't do a good connection when they look good. Loose wires cause fires. This is called a set screw connector. It's a lug, it's got a screw in it, I stick the wire in it, and I crank down on it, and I oversized it. I've got four, remember four, forward slash zero alt wire. I bought lugs that are for 500 MCE, MCM wire. Man, that's huge, sure is. That wire fits right in there. I didn't want to fight the conductors. I didn't want to, I just didn't want to fight it. If you want to save some money, Get a smaller lug, you can get string when you cut that conductor and you get the insulation off you. Now you just got the conductor. You can wrap a string around that conductor when you put it in the lug, pull that string through it, and when you stick that wire in, pull that string and the, the conductors will open up in that lug. I just didn't want to do it. I buy these lugs used off eBay. There's guys selling them all the time. I think I got 25 for six bucks. You're not going to beat that. So I'm going to go over the components just one more time, which I think is critical. And here's one more thing that I like. This is a battery strap. This hooks to the battery, and I can pick it up. This thing is worth its weight and go. When you're moving batteries, it works. It's one of those things that I learned over time, and I'm glad I did. So the last thing I want to go over is grounding. Grounding is, I can't, I can't stress it enough, you can't ground too much. Some of these products don't come with a ground lug. Well, how do you, okay. So what you do, like here on this charger, I scrape the paint off of it, and I've got a ground wire wrapped around a screw that I mounted that device to, and I've got a bar here. All my ground wires, I grounded this. It's metal. This BLS is metal. I grounded it. All of it goes to this bar, and then I've got one ground wire going to the ground rod system outside. Static transit loads, you could have a lightning strike five miles away, it could hit your devices here. You don't want that. A lightning strike on your homestead off grid cabin, even closer, could help you. Nothing helps a direct hit. Uh, you'll see online uh, surge suppressor, uh, lightning suppressor for your solar panels. That's fine if you got the money for that. If you get hit, you get hit. It's just the way it is, folks, and this stuff's going to fry. If it's a slot load that hits it, the grounding system is going to protect you. Also, you're making AC power. You want everything grounded. Be safe with it. So that right there is a little oversight and, and shows you the components that I've done. I probably, I hate to admit how much I spent on my elaborate system. I mean, I was over $10,000 and kept moving north of that. This I'm probably $500 in it. It's the cheapest one I've built so far. Everybody says solar is expensive. It is. Uh, if you can stay on grid, 
stay on grid. This is not worth it. Uh, I want to be independent. Well, the best way to be independent is to use less electricity. If you can't do that, then you need to be on solar. And this is the cheapest way I've found it so far. So I'm going to recap it. You want automotive products. You want marine products. Then eBay is your friend. And if you go on Amazon, look for used components or returned. I've had really good luck with those. For my solar panels, I bought a lot of, uh, this was a, a misnomer they put out there. These are refurbished solar panels. They were brand new in the box. They had a sticker put on them so they could discount them. I bought them. I'm using Renology. I'm not sponsored by them. I've had really good luck with them. This inverter, I think the uh, Kinderex, I never even heard of it. It's just a generic Chinese inverter that had good reviews on it. I do read the reviews. I'm very happy with uh, Missouri wind and solar I can't say enough good things about them another video I'm gonna be doing is their wind turbine install more than happy with it this BLS people can say what they want it works that's basically it and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of nasty comments and uh, you're gonna burn your cabin down and uh, by the way I've got to give you a warning label if you do any of this I'm gonna say you're a moron and you're gonna burn your house down and it's gonna make you sterile alright I'm covered don't do it this has saved me a lot of money. That said, I do appreciate you watching. If you like this video and you learned something from it, please give me a thumbs up. If there's a comment that you see an improvement on or a little tweak, please leave me a comment. I'm also going to be doing uh, more solar, more wind turbine, and uh, I'm actually going to be doing some water turbines. So uh, please subscribe. I'm, that way you can see when these things come out and hit the street. I really appreciate you watching, and uh, it's a big deal that you're watching this channel. I'm trying to make it grow. Uh, take care, and uh, God bless.